um, not grievances, but just frustrations about the workplace and, and so on and how it's just unfair. And um, a lot of times they, they would, you know, voice their frustrations and, and so on, but then it, it would be, that would be where the conversation ends. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it got to a point where I would have to speak up, he's not there. Right. You know, and I and I understand why too, because in in the psyche of the of the man, you know, if he spoke up for me, he fears that he would not only would I lose my job, but so would he. You know, so there's this um, fear that has been um, structured between the black man and black woman, and I do believe they face challenges, but I b believe that black women face more. Um, speaking of that. I kind of wanted to touch on uh, the Monique situation a little bit. You mentioned Monique oh <laughs> and she's winning an Oscar. And, and you know, she's kind of, that's that's her argument. Yeah. You know, um, obviously, you know, if, if, if any of you guys watching at home are, are familiar with Monique's story, um, boycotting Netflix for being um, blackballed and also lowballed in salary in yeah. comparison to her, a white uh, um, female comedian yes. who, you know, she feels she's definitely has a longer resume and experience mm -hmm. and so right. on and so forth. But what do you think about that? Do you find that her argument is valid or is it a case by case s situation? Do you okay. feel like Monique is, is the exact example of what you've just said about okay. black women facing these challenges? So when, when the whole Monique thing started... <laughs> Um, I didn't speak really because, you know, she's, if I were her publicist, there are a lot of things that I'll tell her to do differently. First of all, she needs to fire her husband because he's not doing a great job at her protecting her brand. Um, and some, a lot of times people don't know how to separate, you know, their family from their work. And, um, and I feel like he doesn't make the best decisions for her brand. How, you know, but you know, not to, not to digress. I feel that when it comes to her, she I didn't say anything at first, but I understood her message. I do believe that black women are underpaid extremely, you know, compared to e everyone. Um, I did not like the way she did it. I didn't like the platform she used. I didn't like how she did her message. And furthermore, when I did see the response of Netflix, they didn't give an official response, an anonymous person gave a response and um it, it just showed that monique was right i'm, I'm all for monique but i know you know we'll talk more about that later and we'll continue this conversation yeah again you're watching beyond focus tv my name is tony and we'll be right back back my name is Tony and you're watching Beyond Focus TV again my my guest is Judith Jock we're uh, having a really exciting conversation yeah. um, not just about all the work that you do but what's happening in entertainment in media yeah. with black men black women okay. and before we go or before you go I wanted to get your thoughts on what black history month or what black history means to you Specifically, the month because it's Black History Month. What is, yeah. what is when you when you think of Black History and Black History Month? What does that mean to you? Uh, well, you know, a lot of people say they gave us the shortest month, and I mean, it's only a couple of days, so it doesn't even matter to be quite <laughs> honest. I mean, it's it's great that there's a month that is solely uh, created to not, well, not created for us, but it has been chosen to recognize um, our greatness. Mm -hmm. However, I don't feel that that's where it should be limited you know we we have to understand that we are a lot of us and and a lot of our children our siblings just the black community as a whole we are being educated in a european standpoint you know there's not much of pre-slavery that is being educated to our children and that that's damaging to our images and our identity because you don't under there's not too much to be pride proud of you know if anything it, it causes frustration and confusion and so on so i feel like um during black history uh, although i you know celebrate the month willingly and happily however i feel like you know black history should not just be limited to just one month you know, I think it's something that we should continue as a culture. We have um, a responsibility to. 
Right. That's pretty much it. I agree with you on that. <laughs> um, and what else do you want people to know about you, about your organizations, how they can get in touch with you, what other projects, exciting things you've got in store? Yes. Let us know. Now is your opportunity to, to let people know. <laughs> well, um, like I mentioned before, March 28th and 29th, uh, right here in New York City, our private location, uh, we'll have Black Women in Media Awards and Conference. We're honoring phenomenal women. Uh, you can check that out at www.blackwomeninmedia.com. We also have Black Culinary Expo happening September 1st here in New York City again and you can check that out at www.blackculinaryexpo.org and we have our Black Celebration Awards happening in the fall, November and you can check that out at www.blackcelebrationawards.org <laughs> and y y we are on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook so you can Typically, Black Women in Media, because that has, like you mentioned, become our most popular platform. Um, so, Black Women in Media on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, Black Culinary Expo on all three platforms, and Black Street on all three platforms. So, And where can we find you? Uh, well, I'm on Facebook <laughs> and Instagram and Twitter, Judith Jacques or Judith Bella Jacques. And I also have a virtual firm that caters to... Uh, mostly small businesses and nonprofit organizations. I help startups and I give, uh, I do life coaching. I also do business consultations and that can be found at www.jacquesenterprises.co. So that's J-A-C-Q-U-E-S enterprises.co. Well, since you're well-versed in communications and personal branding, I want to bring it back to the Monique conversation. <laughs> That's a very um, hot topic right now. Yeah. <laughs> and what would you do? You, you advise that, you know, maybe she should fire her manager or her husband. Yeah. And is, is he a manager? He's a manager, right? Yeah, and sometimes okay. personal relationships blur the lines. Yeah. What would you do? What would you have done differently? Um, well, to go back to it, I, I think... Like I said, and I, I don't want that to be lost in, in translation, mm -hmm. I'm okay with her um, issue with Netflix. You know, like her message is relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, black women are being underpaid. Yeah. You know, as a critically acclaimed comedian, actress, um, t talk show host, and mm -hmm. so on, there's no reason why she should be getting paid $500,000. Right. Doesn't matter compared to anyone else. Um, but she compared herself to Amy Schumer, who... In the beginning, I don't feel like she shot Amy Schumer. She said she just noted that Amy Schumer got paid, I believe, was offered ten million. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. You remember, right? Yeah. So maybe I think she went back and she she asked for two more. Yeah, well, she asked yeah. for two more, and then she got twelve million and so on. So now seeing that, and quite frankly, I don't think that Amy Schumer is um, as uh, I, I don't want to. You know, knock her down, but obviously she's not a Monique. Right. And aside from how my personal feelings towards her, mm -hmm. Monique deserves much more. And when you see that in comparison to a white woman, mm -hmm. that is relevant. You know, um, I wouldn't, as her manager or her publicist, like I mentioned, she shouldn't be hiring her, her, her husband. She, he should not be anywhere near her brand because he's damaging it. She, there was this, it seemed like it was a phone at home and they were in front of her you know all of her awards and accolades and so on it was just poorly done mm -hmm. in terms of how she was transmitting you know uh, her message yeah. but um i would have had her you know on a set i would have had her begin a campaign strategically begin a campaign and like i mentioned earlier netflix an, an anonymous person from netflix then tried to say it was an issue with her ego um and you know they they did offer her she she was the one who came to them they didn't go to her and so on and thankfully she you know showed them the receipts that you no know, I did not go to them. This, okay. They were the ones who contacted me. And not only that, I believe the, in the contract or what they said to her, she was not allowed to work with anyone else for the next two years. But but isn't that a standard thing? I, I, I'm not sure if she's the only p comedian or only person in, in the industry who's asked to do those things. So should, should she have she's complied? She's, she's, not, she's not the only one, yeah. but for $500,000 and you're thinking of an Oscar winner, $500,000 divided by two years, yeah. you know, that's 250 per year. That's how much some people are making in corporate America. You know, like in, in, in terms of her craft and the industry that she's in, mm -hmm. she was 
completely underpaid. She should have been given. She has children. She has an estate. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's certain responsibility. Like it, it just boggles my mind that she was offered half a million dollars. And Wanda Sykes, another black woman mm -hmm. who's also critically acc acclaimed, got offered less than five hundred thousand. If I'm not mistaken, it was three twenty five or something like that. Right. You know, three hundred to twenty five thousand. So it, there's there's this um, repetition in terms of how black women are regarded, especially. Uh, uh, what's her name? T uh, Taraji P. Henson. She played in Benjamin Button with um, Brad Pitt. And she said she got one-tenth. Uh, sorry, she got 10% mm -hmm. of what he was offered. And she couldn't even say anything because she knew that they would replace her in a, in a you know, he like in a second they would replace her. She didn't say anything either. Black women are underpaid. Do you think that Monique's strategy blurred that, that conversation? I absolutely do. Think it did blur the conversation. I think she could have found a better message and so on. But um, I, you know, I hope people can see the conversation and realize that this is an issue. And uh, Netflix could have been boycotted, but the way that she went about it, it just you know, sitting well, home at your office, it, it no. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving us your take on that. <laughs> I think <laughs> there's so much that could we can continue talking about this over and over and over. Right. And over. There's so <laughs> many layers to that conversation. Right. But I want to thank you for coming on to the show. Yes, thank you so um, much for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for watching Beyond Focus TV. Again, my name is Tony. Um, if you would like to be on the show, please uh, call the number you see on your screen there. And um, tune in next week. Thank you again. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.